You've probably heard hurricane messages time and time again. But as the season starts, we wanted to remind the public it's better to be safe than sorry. We sat down with local experts to find out the latest predictions and preparations. The Colorado State University team, Professor Gray and his team, have predicted a slightly above average season. According to their predictions, they're looking at about 12 main storms and you're looking at about maybe nine of those could become hurricanes and two of them could become rather intense, which could be category three and higher. No matter what the predictions, Fred Sambool and his team want residents to prepare for the worst from now until the end of November. My advice at any time during the hurricane season is to be prepared to the best you can because whether it is an active season predicted or an inactive season, it only takes one storm. Both hazard management and Met officials are following their own advice. Over the year, we've been working on improving the, the shelter standards by installing generators um, so that if they're needed, um, we, we have better accommodations for shelterees. Um, the National Emergency Center, um, one of the things that we just finalized is a new generator at the fire station that would give us the ability to run continuously full power um, with generators. So we, we're constantly uh, preparing because we can be called on at a moment's notice. All departments are required to submit a, a continuity of operations uh, plans and we held an exercise a couple of weeks ago uh, to help them with uh, preparing their company for operation plans. It would be nice to get them in before the start of the season, but um, if they're still having uh, issues that they have to work out, uh, we'd rather that they work through those and get everything sorted out, even if it's after the beginning of the season. Um, the important thing is to get it done, and that goes for residents, is to get a final plan. Um, get your own, own plan in place um, so that if you're affected by a hurricane, um, you will have a plan, your family will know what to do, you'll know what to do, and things will go a lot smoother. For us at the Met Office, before the hurricane season, we are actually preparing for the hurricane season. We do that in terms of um, things like additional training and development. This is off-season is a time when people attend conferences, we attend workshops, as a matter of fact, you attend things like the Tropical Cyclone Conference of the American Meteorological Society. And NOAA works closely with weather services in the Caribbean. So we update our skills during that time. We look at research. And forecasters are therefore continuously honing their skills in the art of forecasting and tracking hurricanes. Uh, in the Cayman Islands, we have a reasonably good weather service. We have weather forecasters who have attended hurricane workshops at the Hurricane Center in Miami. We have those who have attended what we refer to as the Tropical Desk in Washington, D.C. Uh, so we have a fully trained staff and we have some of the better equipment in terms of satellite tracking. That service is being upgraded. We are now in the process of implementing a weather radar project. And we are hopeful that within the next three years or so, the Cayman Islands could see a weather radar. The difference between a radar and a satellite is that the satellite can only show you certain features at certain times. They don't transmit continuously. A radar, on the other hand, while it does not view globally like the satellite does, once the system gets within three or so hundred miles from your coast, it gets on your radar and you can actually see what the system is doing, how big it is, the type of convection, the strength of the winds, the type of rainfall, and its direction of motion, and you are seeing this continuously. So that if everything else fails around you and your radar is working, you have actual live information about the constitution and composition of the system that you are able to give to emergency management and the people to make decisions. A radar is a costly tool. You're looking at near six or seven million dollars for one radar, a good Doppler radar. Uh, but the return 
in terms of benefits to the nation is well worth it. Cayman would then join a regional radar network. Currently, Barbados, Belize, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago are installing their systems, some of which are already online. The end result? Radar coverage throughout the eastern and western Caribbean.